So there's a city in Georgia called Peach Tree City. I know it's a cool name already. But when I visited there, I found out that this city has paths designated for golf carts throughout the city. These paths are designated for golf carts only and are actually separate and therefore protected from other automobiles, at least for most of the paths. Find out how this city of Peach Tree City promotes aging in place for older adults and how occupational therapists can be a valuable resource in these situations. If you are new to this channel, my name is Jeff, a board certified and licensed occupational therapist practicing in America. A common misconception about occupational therapists is that they help people to find jobs, but instead they help people to do the things that they want to do that are meaningful to them. My goal is to increase awareness about the profession of occupational therapy to help people live healthier and happier lives. If this resonates with you, consider subscribing to this channel and joining to be a member. Check out the video description for other ways you can support this channel too. I'm Jeff, the OT Dude, and let's get functional. In many places in America, driving is an extremely important activity that many of us equate with freedom. Historically, the ability to drive and just go anywhere you want gave women in America a sense of and also more freedom. And to put this into perspective, only recently in Saudi Arabia did they grant women the right to drive. And one common myth I want to dispel is that older adults are generally more unsafe drivers compared to other age groups. However, many studies tell us that statistically, younger drivers are actually more likely to pose a greater risk to traffic safety than older adults. So elderly drivers don't necessarily pose a greater risk than we are made to think, at least in popular culture. But with older age, we do tend to slow down overall. Our reaction times are slower, our senses are less heightened, our vision declines, our hearing is less sensitive. So these changes can affect driving ability as well, but it does not necessarily mean that we should take away an older adult's driver's license just because of their age though. But what I do want to bring the attention to, and this is probably not something that you think of until it happens to you or a family member, is that driving can be unsafe due to an acute condition or a chronic medical condition. Examples include getting into a car accident, having a stroke, or losing your vision such as due to diabetes. As an occupational therapist working with adults in the hospital, one of my role is to evaluate the ability for a patient to drive and whether they may be safe or if they may pose a danger to themselves and others on the road. Because it's not just about that single person, right? The safety of the overall public is also important. So one of the most common reasons for actually recommending to not drive either temporarily or permanently when discussing this with the medical team, such as the physician, nurses, social workers, and other therapists, is that probably someone had a major life-changing event, such as a stroke. Again, there are other reasons as well, either temporary or more chronic and long-term. So what can someone do in these situations, say when the doctor recommends that they do not drive? The first, I think, is to show empathy to these individuals and to provide support because the ability to drive is a very important activity to most Americans. And the core of what I do as an occupational therapist is to promote functional and meaningful activities. But in some cases, finding an alternative way may be a safer option for some people. So the first recommendation is probably the most common one that you would think of is to have someone like a family member or a friend or a neighbor drive you around. But many people like to be independent and don't want to depend on others too. 
So of course, there's also public transportation, but sometimes depending on where you live, it may not be just practical or financially feasible even. So fortunately, modern technology allows us to have other options as well, such as calling an Uber or a taxi from your cell phone. But this can also get very expensive very quickly. One thing that you may not be aware of and you should know is that some insurances do cover the cost of some basically taxi services or private car door-to-door -door services for you for a year. And you may get like a quota, for example, 12 rides a year or something for say medical appointments to go to the pharmacy and things like that. So look into this if you are unaware of this and you think that your insurance may cover something like this. But of all of these, they still don't really allow one's independence, the freedom to just go wherever you want, whenever you want, without having to depend on somebody or wait around or spend a lot of money while doing it. So what I found out when I visited Georgia and I passed by a city called Peach Tree City is that you can't really go around noticing people driving around in golf carts. And I was wondering what's up with that? A lot of different populations and groups of people too, from older adults to families, to younger folks, to families with pets. And they weren't driving them on actual golf ranges, but on paths, it seemed like dedicated paths. And they weren't, you know, crossing paths with vehicles all that much. Although there were vehicle crossings at certain points. So basically the residents of Peachtree City have golf carts, paths that are designated for them and they are city maintained paths for them to drive on safely too. So according to the Peachtree City website, their hallmark is their 100 mile network of paths for pedestrians, cyclists, and golf carts. And these paths allow residents to, and visitors as well to go from neighborhood to say shopping centers, to parks, even go to school. And if you've ever been to Georgia, it's a really gorgeous state with a lot of beautiful scenery too. So it's not like you're just driving on a highway, so to speak. It's a pretty drive. It's nice that you can like literally hop into a golf cart and go to have dinner, maybe go shopping, maybe just hang out at a park and just drive back at your own leisure without the stresses of say road traffic, honking, getting cut off and, you know, even getting pulled over. And in case you are wondering, as mentioned earlier, at certain intersections, there are like road signs that have a designated golf cart symbol, just so you can know that golf carts are going to cross at those certain paths. So I think it's actually pretty safe. And according to their website for their rules, some general common sense, of course, applies, such as obeying traffic rules while you're driving a golf cart. You should not drive under the influence as well or be distracted, say, on your phone and driving a golf cart at the same time. And to drive a golf cart in Peachtree City, you can be actually as young as what I can see is 12 years old if you're a company in the front by the, an adult in the front seat. Of course, these rules may change, so check the latest if you are going to do this, especially as a visitor. And according to the rules, you can actually drive a golf cart with or without a driver's license as long as you don't have your license suspended. So pretty cool, right? And from an occupational therapy and like a functional standpoint, especially for say older adults aging in place or even people with disabilities that it may, may be unsafe to drive around in a regular car or truck or something, golf carts may be a really good option. Why? Well, they go at a much slower top speed of 20 miles per hour. And I would say they're arguably easy to handle and the roads are arguably safer too, right? I mean, it's a golf cart. So I'm not saying people can't get hurt from golf carts or getting run over by it, but compared to trucks and cars, and it's just more safer and you have less inertia and like mass if things were to happen. So much more safer alternative. And I think the drivers of these golf carts probably feel much safer knowing that their vehicle is harder to get into an accident with. But with all this said, what would I love to see in terms of just opportunity? Even if it means paying a little bit more for say a city like in taxes, I would love to see more places have such well-maintained paths, multi-use paths 
that may include things like golf carts. From a green standpoint, it's great. I think it's much better for the environment and having all these cars idling and having them to emit greenhouse gases. And as golf carts are electric, you can just charge them, hop in, and start cruising. You know, and probably get some pretty good mileage since town is not too far away either. And also compared to automobiles, golf carts are much smaller and take less room, so take less real estate in terms of just physical size. And you know, it's a great alternative. If you're just driving alone, or you just have two people driving, to drive a golf cart than an actual large car that may accommodate up to five passengers. And some of these actually have room for cargo too. I actually passed by some houses. I think they had carports, but they were golf cart ports. So pretty cool, like garages for them, like literally dedicated for a golf cart as big as it, like no more. So definitely, I think it's pretty functional too. Like you can go to the shopping centers and business centers, and I even saw in Peachtree City designated parking and spaces for golf carts where they're just lined up. So it's like a really efficient, like I said earlier, like physics, the space that they take up is much smaller. And in terms of cost, they. Golf cart would cost less than a car, especially if you buy it used too, right? So, with the actual like functional practicing and doing of driving, I think most people driving a golf cart would feel much safer because it doesn't go as fast. And you know, if you were to get into an accident with another golf cart or something like that, it's just not as a big of a deal. I think. What are some cons to this? They aren't all pros, right? Well, according to the Peach Tree. Website. It costs approximately three million dollars to maintain the paths for the entire city per year, I believe. So to me, that seems like a lot in the beginning. But if all the residents pitch in and actually use it, I think it's a good use of the money. And because the workers have to maintain the paths and keep it in like away from like trees and things like that, I've also heard of some drama going on with some non-residents using the paths, but I think they've since worked that out too. So I'm glad they reached a conclusion. And of course, there are some costs involved. So you have to pay registration fee. I think several hundred dollars to get like a sticker to drive a golf cart. But I don't think that's too unreasonable compared to say other things like DMV fees. And another thing now I would sign is probably at least I don't think no air conditioning. So Georgia can get pretty hot, but with that intense heat, you know you're getting some wind going through. You could probably time the day you drive so, like at nighttime, avoid like the hot sun. So I guess you could probably also adapt it and hack it and get like one of those fans, like portable fans, and mount it on it. So I saw a lot of people driving around in it, and it was like really hot day, and they didn't seem to really have an issue, like. Of course, be careful if you're prone to heat stroke. Keep well hydrated and things like that. But I think it's a pretty cool thing to have this be able to like retire and get from point A to point B leisurely without having to get into a car and worry about the stresses of like road traffic and even road rules. Like you're just driving on a path, like you have to obey general traffic rules. But compared to like lanes, you don't have like laneage. You don't have lights. You don't have to change lanes. You don't have to like follow like rules and regulations as many of them, and so I definitely would be think it'd be cool to see this expand to other places, other countries. Let me know in the comments if you guys have something like this, where you can have multi-use paths, especially and drive things like golf carts at them. I definitely want to know around the world what it's like for getting around and community mobility. So let me know in the comments, and what do you think? Would you be open to something like this? Being implemented or provided where you live, what do you think are the pros and the cons of something like this?